Today's video is sponsored by MPB, the best place online to buy, sell and trade photography and videography gear. So in a previous video, I shot with the Fujifilm XC4 crop sensor camera, the Fujifilm 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. And in that video, I talked about some techniques that you can use to get the most out of a basic setup. But if you're gonna upgrade your, your gear, do you upgrade the lens, do you buy a star tracker, or maybe it's best to invest in some education and some software. That's what we're gonna be looking at in today's video. Somewhere down there is a cave and uh, we need to go and find it before it gets dark because it's really dangerous around here. So I'm on the Lycian Way on the southwest coast of Turkey and this cave was brought to my attention by one of my YouTube followers, Maximo Science. He saw my video from this coastline a couple of years ago, visited himself and took some really awesome Milky Way images. And then after he found this cave, he told me about it and repaid the favor. So come to visit tonight. Hopefully the clouds will disappear soon, but uh, just got to wait for it to get dark. So we're going to have some food and a coffee and uh, wait for the stars to come up. All right, first let's talk about upgrading the lens. So the problem with kit lenses is, is that they only go as wide as 18 mil. On a full frame, that's 27 millimeters and it's quite tight and quite difficult to work with. In astrophotography, it's nice to have ultra wide lenses that so you can get a lot of the landscape and a lot of the beautiful night sky. So upgrading the lens allows you to get a wider lens, which is a lot easier to work with, especially if you're a beginner in astrophotography. The other issue with kit lenses is that they typically only open to f3.5, so they don't let much light in. The Fujifilm lens, I was quite surprised, it opens up to f2.8 at 18mm, which is really good. But if you buy a prime lens, you can get even wider apertures. So I've gone for the Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens so f1.4 is super wide it's going to let a lot of light in uh, to each exposure 16 mil doesn't sound significantly wider than 18 mil but it is a lot easier to work with it's a 24 millimeter equivalent on a full frame camera 24 millimeters my personal favorite focal lens to work with because if it's not wide enough you can shoot a panorama if you wanted a wider lens another really good lens for beginners in astrophotography is the samyang 12 millimeter f2 lens it's a very compact very affordable lens really good for astrophotography and it's really nice and wide and if you're a beginner that would probably be the better choice yeah i'm gonna get some shots with this probably do a panorama inside this cave and see what we can achieve So this was the final result and I was pleasantly surprised with how bright and detailed this image was and if I tried to take this with a kit lens the interior of that cave would have been super noisy but thanks to the f1.4 aperture it's bright it's detailed and there's not much noise in there so the gear i'm using in today's video the fujifilm xe4 and the 18 to 55 kit lens i bought from the sponsors of today's video mpb it's the best place online to buy sell and trade photography and videography gear so i quite like buying used to save a bit of money got some amazing prices with mpb and everything you buy from MPB comes with a six month warranty, which is pretty awesome. So head on over, check out the prices. And if you need some money to fund the new gear, maybe you can trade in some of your old gear that you haven't used for a while. Just head to mpb.com, let them know what you're trading in, let them know the condition it's in, and you'll get an instant quote online. If you're happy with the quote, you can arrange a collection from your address at a date of your choosing, completely free, and everything's just swift and professional and easy. You get paid pretty quickly, and so you can have some money to buy some new gear. So follow the link in the video description down below. Check out the amazing prices on mpb.com and maybe trade in some gear that you haven't used for a while. So what about purchasing a Star Tracker? Well, a Star Tracker is going to allow you to get much longer exposures of the night sky without any star trailing. And that allows you to get 
much more detail out of the Milky Way and other faint objects in the night sky. The problem is, if you're using a poor lens on a star tracker, you're still using a poor lens. I mean, you might be able to stop the aperture down to f4.5 or f5.6 and get better performance out of the lens, but the lens still might be soft and you still might be struggling with the 18 millimeter focal length. And so personally, I recommend you upgrade your lens before getting a star tracker. The other issue is that when you start tracking the night sky, the foreground becomes blurry. So you have to take a separate exposure of the foreground and then blend those two together in Photoshop. And if you haven't blended the sky with the foreground before, it might be quite difficult for you. It can be a bit of a strong learning curve and there's a lot of instances where it's very difficult to blend a tracked sky onto a foreground especially if you have trees and things blocking the sky. So uh, buying the Star Tracker means you have to learn a lot of new skills in Photoshop, which can be a little bit daunting for beginners, which is why it's much easier to just upgrade the lens, get more light in each exposure. You could do things like stacking where the software does it all for you. And yeah, it's just a, a much, much more natural step up from a kit lens compared to buying a Star Tracker. Another issue is setting up. Some people really hate setting up star trackers. You have to do something called polar alignment, where you line up the axis of rotation of the star tracker with the celestial pole, Polaris, the North Star, um, in the night sky. And some people really struggle with this. It can be quite a fiddly process. And again, it's one of those things that if you don't enjoy getting over that learning curve, you might just stop using the star tracker altogether. So another thing to be aware of and another thing that makes the Star Tracker a bit more of a difficult step up from a kit lens compared to getting a better lens suited for astrophotography. So the next night I took my camera and Star Tracker to an old Ottoman cistern that I found on Google Maps. And this was the result and I was pleasantly surprised with how much detail I got out of the Milky Way. And that's the beauty of a Star Tracker. You could do much longer exposures, get much better detail. And I was super surprised with how much pink, red, hydrogen alpha was in there, even though this is a stock, unmodified crop sensor camera. So in the next video, I'm going to look at how education, knowledge, and software can improve your images. So hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.